it's Cindy from Quilters Covered in Ankeny, Iowa again, and we're at Purse Party Part 2 for 2017. So this section is going to be purses and bags. So some of the bigger stuff that we've had a great time with this year. So I'm going to start with the Maxwell bag. I think the Maxwell bag is just a gorgeous bag. Is it the easiest bag in the world? Yeah, pretty simple until I got to the handles, and I'll give you a couple tips on those. But Maxwell is, again, the foam. So any bag that you just want to stand all by itself, you're going to want to put that foam in because it makes all the difference in the bag. Now, not every bag do you want foaming because you want it to be a soft and kind of a little bit more flexible bag. But for these that are more totes, the foam works great and they'll hold up much longer than the other bags. So this one is called the Maxwell bag. I want to grab a pattern to show you. And I don't know if we can get a little bit of a close-up on the front cover of the pattern. So this is what attracted me to it, is all of the patchwork part of it. Okay, then we'll go back out, and I'll put that back. But I couldn't find enough fabrics that I really like to go together, and I had this gorgeous one motif fabric. So in the pattern, she either lets you do the patchwork version or the one fabric version. But I like the patchwork, so I patchworked my um, side pieces. So you've got outside pockets as well. You've got inside pockets. You've got a little bit of everything. Now, some of you think your machines are just not capable of sewing through all of these layers of foam. And some of them probably aren't. So my one suggestion, if it's just getting a little overwhelming, to leave out the foam in your outer pockets. It won't make that much difference, and it might on whether you're able to get that project done. So these handles use... Um, a thick cording to go inside and then they're wrapped in foam. So it went well until I tried to get it through this tube. So my suggestion for you is to use the cording but maybe only wrap a layer of batting, something a little thinner around the outside so that you can get it through. But it's just an absolutely beautiful bag called the Maxwell bag. And if you're a knitter or you take projects everywhere, you're gonna love this one. My mother is not getting this. I'll show you which one she is getting in a minute. All right, our next one that we're going to do is called the My Retreat Bag. So this one's got a little bit of fun embroidery on it. So you've got to have an embroidery machine to do this part. Any machine can put it, the rest of it together. Cute little scallops. So that's what it would look like without embroidery. Or you could do, you, you guys have great imaginations. You'll come up with something. So this one uses a combination of decor bond which is the heavier iron-on interfacing, and fusible fleece, which is then iron-on batting. And um, if you're concerned about what some of these products are, be happy to give you more information. I don't know if you'll be able to see my little splotches, but we'll try that a little bit later. But that combination to me is like the sweet and salty, right? Just the best combination there is, because it gives body to the inside of the bag. That's where the um, decor bond goes. And then the outside of the bag stays soft with the fleece or the battings. So no pockets on this guy, but just a cute bag. And a nice little zipper top. So Annie's uses those thicker, bigger, like a sport zipper. These guys just use our regular, you know, 22 inch zippers, which works great. It just gives you a lighter weight feel, not quite as um, involved a bag. So that was a pretty easy one to make, called the My Retreat Bag. Next one we're gonna do is Little Sister. So you can see just by looking at it that this bag doesn't have the same shape as those Annie's bags. Just kind of collapses a little bit in my hands. That's okay, we might want that. So this one's just fusible fleece in this bag. But again, very nice zippered top. Lots of binding, which I love binding, so it's not a problem because I've got a great machine way to do binding. Great outside pockets, good inside pockets. Um, I don't know, can we get a little close up on the inside of there? So tons of pockets, and I forget what I'm supposed to go bag for the inside, but maybe you saw the inside, maybe you didn't, but we're all good. Um, then I had a little bit of leftover fabric, because if I'm gonna go to all the trouble to quilt all of this fabric and have a chunk left over, I just made just a cute little zipper pouch to go with it. We just got a new little camper um, last year, which we haven't even really gotten to use yet. So I'm preparing myself with the cute um, camper fabric. Now, camper fabric, you may go, that's darling. 
go, I don't like that bag, I like him. So think about the bags and the shape and what the bag does, not necessarily my fabric choices. The other thing I want to tell you about that will kind of relate to a lot of these bags is directional prints. So this one's directional, quite a few of the other ones we've seen so far have been directional prints because those tend to be a bit cuter in style. And these bags are just having you put one big gigantic piece of fabric and then cutting your pieces. Well if you do that and you fold it, this is going to go the right way, this side would be upside down. So as you're cutting it, allow a half inch to whatever size they told you to cut it, cut it then in half rotate the pieces so that you then have a seam at the bottom but your directions are going the right way and then quilt it just as you normally would. So it's a great way just to, to fix that but do think about that before you start or your little um, deer are going to be or your moose are going to be going upside down and you don't want that to happen. So this is um, just a great bag, very easy to make. Next one we're going to do is this is the one that I'm going to show my mom to see if she might like. And it is called the Bon Voyage bag. It is beautifully made dye. And guess what? It's from By Annie's. And that's probably why it's so beautifully made. And that's the pattern that we're looking for. So some of these that I've shown you are just great big bags. They're not bags you're going to carry as a purse. This one is going to be a gorgeous carry as a purse. Her straps are okay. Now what if the straps aren't okay? Preview them on before you go to all the trouble to make that bag because you can always make them a little longer or shorter depending upon what you want. There is beautiful outside pockets. Now Annie's does a very nice technique that a lot of people try and, well they copy because it's so well done. And we've seen it already in I think two bags I've shown you. But it's this placket that the zipper goes in. So you're not trying to sew a zipper and the buy-in and the foam all at the very top of the bag. She actually makes her zipper a little bit longer um, and has this nice large placket, which is the same size as the bottom, so that that bag stays, so it holds a lot. Now, if you go, oh, what she got on the bottom of that bag? Annie's technique also, which we have been using on lots of things, is to sew, instead of having to put purse feet on, which are really still a lovely option and look very sharp, is you sew buttons on the bottom. Can you get a little close up or maybe you can see it just fine? But these are just buttons that I've sewn on with my sewing machine, because why would I do them by hand if I didn't have to? And they make the perfect base for when your bag is sitting on the ground, it doesn't get dirty. So it's a wonderful way to do. This one also has something else that I absolutely love, is an inside loose zippered compartment too. So not necessarily just a, a pocket, but an extra, kind of an extra fancy one, plus extra bags in there, or papers in there. If you happen to watch this video fairly quickly, we do still have a couple kits left for this guy as well. All right, next one we're gonna do is checkered tote bag. Checkered tote bag, here we go. I'm not, I like to talk, I like to show you good stuff, but I'm not, you know, I don't have my marks on the floor. So I'm getting hand motions from my daughter to scoot around. So this one is called, as I said, checker tote bag because of all the little squares. I liked this bag a lot. It ended up being bigger than I wanted, but my color choices failed in this one. So this is where you just assume everything, you know, we do is going to turn out perfectly, but it doesn't. Now my sewing is lovely on it, but I didn't like how the whole thing ended up. It's supposed to be four different fabrics and it starts with strips and you just piece your strips together, you know, and then cut them into um, strips and then sew them back together. The assembly, very easy. But there's black and white. You, these quadrants are the same. These quadrants are the same. And same on the other side, you've got four new sets. So I love the black and white. That went very, very nicely. In my mind, this band and the bottom was gonna show more, it was wider. So I really wanted a pop of color to offset my black and white. But because this band ended up so small, I didn't get the color pop. This bag would have been much prettier had I just gone with a Moda Grunge or you know something that had um, not quite as much pattern to it. Then that would have been much more striking. 
handles great, everything about the bag. Otherwise, I love. No closure, magnetic snap would have been a breeze to put in. But it's that same combination of decor bond, and this one actually uses just batting, which I didn't think was strong enough. I would have used a fusible fleece. But we try and make the bags just like the patterns call for, so that you guys can feel and go, oh, no, wish I'd like to do it slightly different. These handles are also decor bond. So they're a little bit um, firmer. They're not gonna be as soft on my shoulder if I've got a lot of stuff in this bag. So I might've done those differently as well. So check her tote, also by the same lady, is the rail fence tote. Now this one turned out spectacularly in color. It actually starts with um, a charm pack. So the five inch squares, you cut them to make your rails, you put them back together, and it comes this gorgeous bag. So this is kind of what I was talking about on the other one. See how this pop of color just really highlights this? That's what was lacking on the prior bag. Handles are gorgeous, and Joyce used um, a stitch called the hand quilting stitch on your sewing machine. So it kind of does forward, backward, forward, a little stitch, forward, backward, forward, and it makes a really decorative um, stitch on your handles as well. And then we quilted all of this just using the serpentine stitch, nothing fancy on this guy. Inside pockets are wonderful, fusible fleece decor bond, but she used the um, fleece in the handle, so these handles are a lot softer, and these handles are a little wider than it's on the other bag. And again, no closure, magnetic snap. I like to put those on just about everything because I don't want you know my bag to tip over in the car and everything fall out. So that one is rail fence tote. Next one we're gonna do is called the luggage rider carry-on bag. Okay, again, popular, popular one for purse parties. So if you don't know, my husband and I own Rocket Fizz, which is the fun retro candy and soda shop here in Ankeny. If you haven't been, you must go. But anytime that I see fun fabric with sodas or candies or whatever, um, I have to make something out of it. So this bag just calls for that. So as you can see, again, just a nice big tote bag. Great pockets, closure, um, foam, and fusible fleece for this one. But the cool thing about this is this pocket is open so that you put it over your luggage, right? It goes over the handle of your, um, your luggage or your whatever, your, or your sewing machine um, bag. And then when you get your luggage checked in at the airport, you pop this off and it then becomes your carry-on. So it's a great little combination bag. Um, this one does have magnetic snap, very lovely done, and um, no inside pockets, but I could easily have added it. This is um, from Cut Loose Press, so it's one of the inexpensive little $3.50 patterns, and they're very well written, um, just nice bags. Nice, easy to follow instructions, and I liked it a lot. On here, you might have noticed, this is a little um, coin purse, can handle your earbuds, whatever, and my chapstick holder. And they are all done in the hoop machine embroidery, one of the Kimberbell designs that we have for that. Okay, there's that guy. Next one while I'm over here has been kind of fun. It's a brand new one called the Dina bag. Now, this bag has got a cool shape, no bottom, so it's not gonna hold quite as much, but I think it's darling. And Joyce Ann picked great fabric. Magnetic snap here, here, and here to really hold your things in there, and a nice handle length. I think that worked out just beautifully. So this one is a brand new one we have called the Dina bag. Finally in stock, so it's really finally here. Next one is the Tahoe tote. So again, a purse size bag, not a great big thing. The color choices are great, so a perfect way to showcase a large print as well. Now, a lot of bags will tell you to cut your handle 22 inch. Only reason they do that is you can get two out of the width of your fabric. So always think about how are you gonna use this bag? Over my arm, this is just a fine length. Over my shoulder, not long enough. So you can easily adjust. Maybe you just get an eighth of a yard additional fabric, and who knows, you may even have had enough to start with. But I think this is quite, quite a lovely one. And then there's very nice pockets on the inside as well. So, uh, Tahoe Tote is that one. All right, our next one in this category, oh, we gotta show you this one too. Remember the black and white
white one and then the fun batik one. Well, this is like a baby sister to those called the Sophie Jane bag. And this uses the little two and a half inch squares, the candies from Moda to make this one. I'm only showing you this one and there's uh, one of our cute new Lulu Lane uh, groups because it also makes a great Easter bag or a little Easter purse for kids. So I wanted to show you that one or a May Day basket or, you know, whatever. Um, ours is obviously Halloween, but it's just it goes together really fast. And our next one is going to be the BF bag or the best friends bag. This is one that Jen made. Again, just a nice size bag, does strips and Again, got a couple kits left if you're watching it fairly soon. I love the way the handles go all the way around so it really supports things. And the point of this one is uh, the fabric, there's enough to make two. So you keep one and you give one to your best friend. So that has been a really nice um, bag from Marlis Designs. We like her stuff a lot. And the fun orange, just great fabric. I do believe, nope, we got a couple left in this category. Barbados is a new one for this year. Um, love it. I have to make one of these for myself. Now, handle to me is too long. So I could have shortened it. I do want it for a crossbody bag, but I'm not tall enough for quite that length. So I could have tied a knot in the top, which we all have done many times, or I would have just shortened or put a slide on there so I could have done adjustable straps. But great hardware. Nice little pocket here for cell phone. So uh, when you go on the roller coaster, as I always say, your phone won't fall out. Good inside pockets, um, just a lot going on in this bag. This is a great travel bag, as well as just a smaller purse to take, you know, chop pops and whatever you're gonna do. And a couple really nice pockets on the back for whatever stuff. And that one is a pink sand beach. These patterns we like a lot too. So that's Barbados. And then I think the last one for this category is going to be the Crazy Patch Tote. This is one I designed for an upcoming class uh, with our Baby Lock sewing machines. So the point of this one is to, well, the Crazy Patch part is fun, you know, so you're just gonna patch that together. Now, I don't think you guys can see, but each of my Crazy Patch seams has a different decorative stitch. So with several of our baby locks, our Crescendo, our Unity, Destiny, um, they come with uh, what's called a sensor pin. So it uh, will allow me to tell it, hey, I'm going to start here. I start to sew. I use my sensor pin. I touch here. My machine automatically adjusts the uh, stitch so it can condense it or elongate it just a little bit so that that repeat will finish perfectly at the point I've asked it to do. So that's just one of the fabulous things on our baby lock machines, but that's what I designed this one for. And then people said, oh, do you have a pattern for it? So I actually put it together as a pattern. So you're not gonna be able to see, but there's a little piping in the sides that I show you how to do in the pattern. A piping foot is really your best friend. And then the other cool thing on this one is, and you can do this on just about any bag, cut your lining um, an inch taller than what your bag is. So if this was 12, I cut my lining 13. And I just bring my lining up over the top a little bit, use my stitch in the ditch foot, stitch in there, and it looks like I put a decorative edge or um, a little binding around the top. I have it, it's just my lining cut a little bit taller. So this bag is very fun, and again, it's just one of mine, so I think it's a $5 pattern. This also has a single strap handle, which sometimes is nice instead of those doubles all the time. And it's just a good size bag. Great showcase for um, maybe a machine embroidered block that you've done, a focal, maybe a panel, lots of potential for this bag. All right, I think that's gonna wrap up part two. Did I get all my fun ones around me? I think I did. All right, so that's all for part two of First Party 2017. We'll see you back in just a minute, thanks.